Okay, so uh, we are talking about production. So in production we had uh, two parts. One was short run production, short run. Another was long run. Long run. So when we talked about production function, we got short term production function. Well, at least one input or factor of production is fixed. And we had long run production function. Function where all inputs are variable. That means there is no fixed input. So all the inputs are variable. All the inputs changed once at least anyway so here no some inputs maybe at least one input at least one input is fixed so we started with this short term production process what happens if we keep all the inputs fixed only one input is variable that means one input is changed what happens to the return what happens to the output so we saw uh, four trends in the returns if we continue to increase one input keeping all other inputs fixed so we said uh, if we change one input like it was like that so capital and level so it includes everything Level is level. So level and all other things are here. So suppose we assume that level is variable and all other factors are fixed. For example, 3, 3, 3. So this is always fixed. So 1 level, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So what happens? The proportions. So these are the proportions. These are the proportions. Proportions of what? Proportions of what? These are the proportions. One. Proportions of labor and proportions of the inputs. So you have an input here and another input here. So this is the proportion of the inputs. Another proportion. Another proportion. So when we keep all other inputs fixed, if we change only one input, what happens? The proportions become very good. So that's why it says, say, if we keep all other factors fixed, we change only one factor, what happens to the returns? What happens to the returns? If we change the proportions of inputs, what happens to returns? What happens to output? So we say the principles, if we keep all other factors fixed, we change only one factor or increase one factor the output is not always coming at an increasing rate sometimes we find that output is increasing but at, a, at an increasing rate and, and then we see output is still increasing but the rate is diminishing then at one stage we find that the output remain fixed finally if we still continue to increase one input finally we see what the output falls so there were some principles which is called law of returns to variable proportions. So in the short term, that means what? Means what? In the short term we find the output is coming in different rates. So what does it mean? What does it mean? Yeah. yeah. If you just write uh, uh, the, the law of vari uh, variable, variable, variable proportion, proportion. So what does it mean? What does it mean? Variable proportion means what? It means yes, level. Yes, if we yeah. So if we <coughs> keep all other factors fixed, if we change level. only one factor, what happens to our output? So it's a short, shorter situation or longer situation? Short term. Short term. Because some factors are 
fixed. fixed. So this is a short run situation. So in the short run, if we keep continuing, uh, just keep one factor one. increasing, in continuous one after one, what happens? The output in the beginning is coming at increasing rate. So which is called increasing returns. Returns to what? <coughs> Variable <coughs> proportions. This is increasing returns to variable proportions. What does it mean? Keeping all other factors fixed. Okay. If we change only one factor, the output is increased Increase. at an increasing rate. At an increasing rate. In last class, we, we gave these examples. So keeping all other factors fixed. So for example, uh, everything is fixed. So land, everything is fixed. We just increase the level. So level is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right. So if the level is 1, for example, the output is 2 units, two units. and 4, four. So, so what is the increase? 2 units. Two. So then it can three. be 7 plus 3. Three. three, it can be 12 plus 5. So the output is increased, but the rate of increase or contribution of the additional level increasing. is increased. Increasing in so that's why we call it increasing returns to variable proportion. Then, yes, output still increasing, plus 3. Then 16, so plus one. one, then maybe 16 again. Maybe zero. So the change here is zero. And then maybe 50 minus. minus one. So what you can see in this portion, output is still increasing but at a diminishing rate. Output increases. Yes, 15, 16. 16. Diminishing rate. But here it is constant. constant. Output is not increased anymore. It, it remains constant. Finally, we see output is decreasing. Decrease. So that's why we say if we keep all other factors fixed, because of the fixed factors, because of the capacity of the fixed factors, if you increase only one factor, you will find in the beginning, since fixed factor got a capacity. So for these students, it is not wise to go to the conference hall. It's a very big room. So you cannot go to the conference hall for this small class. Or, if you think of a machine, it needs for example five people. If you like to operate the machine, you need five people. But if you engage one people, one person, so what he or she can do? She can just, uh, yes, press here, there, there, there. So it is possible. But you are not using the full capacity of the machine. So that's why it's a man machine ratio will be perfect when the full capacity is exploited. So since you have the fixed factors, you have the capacity of the fixed factors. So initially, if you increase the level, you can say output is increasing at an increasing rate. Then when you just are closer to the full capacity of the fixed factor, what do you see? Diminishing the output rate. is increasing but rate is diminishing because you are just closer to the capacity of the full uh, uh, fixed factor. Then you cannot increase anymore because it is the full capacity. So if you increase the level, only the cost will be increased. Output is not increasing anymore. And then if you add more level, what will happen? Decrease. The output will decrease. Why? Because the extra labor will disturb other people. So the output, you cannot have uh, expected output from them. So output is not increasing, but in this case, output is falling even. Because of the extra people in the production process. So in case of any input, for example, you have a piece of land, you are putting fertilizer, urea. So what will happen? In the beginning, use the fertilizer. If you don't use the fertilizer, so you will have a level of production. If you use fertilizer a little, so maybe increase some impact you will see. But if you increase for example 1 kilo, so then you may have little bigger output. Then if you put uh, maybe uh, 3 kilo, which is the optimum level, then you will have the highest level of output. Then if you put 5 kilo, what will happen? Maybe the production will be hugely hampered. So, your production will be decreased. So, that is the reason. So, if you increase, if you double the land or triple the land, even if you uh, put 10 kilo, it will not be a matter for you. 
it will not disturb your production but the you think you see since the land is fixed and you are increasing the fertilizer after a certain level you will find that it will be detrimental for the land for the for the crop
but you cannot go there because it is constant. So if you increase one more level, for example, four, five, if you increase one more level, output is not increasing. Okay. So it will just increase your cost. So you will not go to this level. But production decrease. Yes. So you will not go there. So you will take a decision here in this region. So this region is very much important. Which region? Diminishing returns to variable proportion. This reason is very much important. So that's why this law is the, this portion of the big law is very important. Huh? Yeah. In, in increasing region, what you, you will do? You, if you stop, you are just losing. Because if you add one more level, for example, now one level is uh, working on the land. So you are getting two units. Then I added him. So if he, when he is added, your production became four. That means his contribution is two. Two. Then I added him. So now it is seven. His contribution is three. Then if I add you, so maybe the output will be twelve. So it is five. Your contribution is five. So I am giving the same ways to everybody. You see, so your contribution is five. So why I will stop there? Yes. Yeah, so why I will stop there? Because you are producing five units, and I am giving the same money what I gave him and him. So then, if we add another person, output is increasing, maybe twelve, fourteen. So now the the contribution of the, that uh, person is what two months or two years. <coughs> then you add another one. Now one. the output, yes, maybe one, one. maybe sixteen or uh, seventeen. Zero. Now the output is Zero. not increasing anymore. Zero. So what happens? What happens if you add another one? Zero. Output will not be increased. Zero. So Zero. what happens? The Zero. Zero. only the cost will be increased. Zero. So where you will decide in the increasing region or diminishing region? So just before that you have to decide someone. Before going to the constant region, you will decide someone. No, we should not cross the dimension. No. We should you no. within the dimension? Within the dimension. The last touch is up to Yes. You will check out. Actually, you have to because to have the decision, you need to know the revenue. So you are getting the output. And yeah. So you, you are getting the output, then you will see uh, what is the price. You will get from the market for this output. Then you will have the revenue, and you have the cost. Then you will compare. So that's why we said we will not go beyond this region. So within this region, we will decide, and that's why it is called the economic region. So decision is made here. Okay. So we'll see how to make the decisions. So this is the short term situation. This law is very much related to short term. Short term because how this law came, keeping all other factors fixed, only we change one factor. One factor. This is the big law. So if you are asked to tell about this law, so you will say keeping all other factors fixed, if we increase only one input, in the beginning the output is increasing, increasing at an increasing rate, then the output still increasing at a diminishing rate, then output remains constant, then finally output falls. So what we found in sum from this law, if we continue to increase one input, keeping all other factors fixed, output will not always increase. So that is the, the summary. Now, this is a law. And we can divide this law into three, four parts. So this can be a law, law of increasing returns, law of diminishing returns, law of constant returns, law of decreasing returns. You can divide this law in different parts. So if you are asked to explain the law of diminishing returns to variable proportion, what you will say? Keeping all other factors fixed, yes. if we continue so increasing on increasing on increase on only one, one input, input what it? happens to output? The yes. output is increased at a diminishing rate. So don't tell any other portion. Yeah. For example, if you are asked to explain this law, what is the main theme of the law of decreasing returns to variable proportion? What you will say? Sir. If we keeping all uh, other 
factors are constant, only one factor is variable. Mm -hmm. <coughs> then the, if I in increase the one input, yes. uh, the, output? the output will be same. Output will be decreasing. Now, the output will be constant. Constant, okay. The output will be constant. The output will be constant. Right. Yeah, that is the law. That is the main theme of this law. Right. So, if you are asked to explain the main theme of this law, so you will be confined within this portion. So, don't talk about other or the, the latter one. So, if you are asked to explain this law, you will be confined on this portion. So, what will be that? Keeping all other factors fixed, if we increase only one. only one input, the output is falling. So that is the is the the, the last part of the production. Uh, production trend. So if you continue to increase one input, what happens eventually? This is the eventual result. This is the beginning, then in the middle. And then later we find constant, this result, the output is no longer increased, and finally we find decrease out of the So this is all about the short term situation. If your production process is a short term production process, that means you are not uh, changing some fixed factors, there are some fixed factors. What will happen? You will face these four situations. Now let us think of uh, another situation, long run situation. What happens, what happens if we, okay, so what happens if we increase or change the scale of production, was it, what does it mean, scale of production means what? It's scale of production. Scale of production, so now, up to now what we, we say, up to now we uh, assume that all other inputs fixed, only one input is changed, is variable. That means it is a short run situation. Now we are telling that every inputs, all inputs will be changed proportionately. Maybe double, maybe triple, all the inputs will be double, all the inputs will be triple. So that is scale change. This is no more in short run. No, no. This is short, long run situation. In long run, what you can do? We change everything proportionally. Yeah, proportionally. Double, triple, whatever it is. So that is called scale change. So you are changing the scale of production. Everything is changed. Everything is expanded. So this is called scale. <coughs> yes, for example, if you like to uh, make two, so your machine is six. six. So, 3, 9, 4, 12. So, you, you are just changing the scale of production. That means everything is changed yeah. proportionally. Long everything run. is, yeah. It's a long run situation. In long run, we don't have any fixed factor. All the inputs are variable. variable. Everything is variable. So, if we change this one, we have to change this one. So, why we have to change proportionately? Think of Rosh Malai, for example, if you like to make Rosh Malai, so if you uh, make, for example, one kilo, now if you like to make two kilo, two kilo. Rosh Malai, what do you think? The inputs will be changed, will, you will you like need to change the inputs proportionately or uh, if you don't change proportionally, it will be okay for you. What do you think? Otherwise, the quality will fall. Because production means you have to create some value, it, the, 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 whatever you are creating, and that must got an utility to people or someone. So if you change the proportion, it's a kind of technical relationship. Isn't it? It's a kind of technical proportion, it's a technical relationship. It's a process of creating something that will create some value. So if you like to create some value, so you cannot change the proportion immediately. For example, uh, look, or you visit, or you, Nabisco, do you think the two biscuits are same? No. No. So these are the technical relationship between the inputs and output. So you can change the, the, the technique or change the ratio. If you change the ratio, the output will be changed. The quality of the output will be changed. So the, the value it is now creating or the utility it is now giving to anyone, uh, it will not give the same utility. Yeah, if you change the variables, if you change the ratio of the inputs. So that's why 
Scale change means I am changing everything proportion. In the short term, what we did, we uh, assumed or we kept some uh, or most of the variables fixed. Only we changed one. That's why we suffered. We saw that the output is increased in the beginning. Then, so we didn't uh, think about the quality etc. There, but that situation is not applicable uh, to everywhere. If you think about raw raw production, that situation is not possible in raw uh, yeah, raw production. So you have to change everything proportion. So if you change everything proportion, what happens? Do you think that the output will be increased always? If you double, for example, now. Uh, so let us take an example. Like uh, you are producing 20 units, yes, 20 units of something. something. So maybe uh, 3, 1, so it is K, L, so K is 3, and L is 1. L is 1. Okay, L is 1. So uh, 3 units of K and 1 level you can use to have 20 units of something. It can be anything. It can be uh, potato, rice, whatever it is. So, it is the output. So, what is this? In the introduction, uh, introductory chapter, we, we talked about this. Uh, demand curve. Demand curve. Demand curve. Demand curve. No, no, no. It was the equal product curve. Equal product curve. How to produce. When we answered the how to produce question, then we talked about this. So, we can get the same output by using more capital, lower amount of level. Or, Lower amount of capital, more level. Level. Is it? it yes. It is possible. So you can change the ratio sometimes. Okay. Fine. So, so by this ratio, this combination of capital and level, we can get 20 units of output. Output. And this line is called equal product curve. Equal product. That means. At every point on this slide, the output is same. So only what is shown? Only the combination is only combinations are changed. So that's why it's called equal product curve, or it is called ISO quant. ISO means equal, uh, quant means product. So it's ISO quant. So you can call it equal product curve or ISO quant or constant product curve, whatever is fixed product curve. So that means the output is fixed in this slide. Q is fixed. So what you can change if you move to this point or that point, what will happen? Only the proportion. Only the proportion of K and L will be changed. So you will have lower amount of capital and more level. So this is equal product curve. So now, so, so let us. Then product will be same. Huh? Yeah, product. This, this in this curve, product will be always same. That's why it's called equal product curve. Now let us make it <coughs> six and make it two. We double the inputs. So now the point is here. So what do you think? This point, for example, A, B, B is on this no. ISO point or not? Another ISO point. ISO point. That ISO point. Another ISO point. By nature, this ISO point is the upper ISO point. So which indicates the upper output. So this output is 20. 20. Any any line above this line will indicate the output level which is more than 20. Right. So these are the characteristics <laughs> of this kind of <coughs> lines, isoquants. So isoquant got some specific characteristics. So you'll find the upper isoquant shows the upper level of output. Okay, so suppose it is 40. What happened? I doubled the inputs. Output, what happened to output? Output level doubled. Or it can be 50. What happened? Yeah. Output, if I would double the input, output became more than double. Or it can be 35. We double the input, output One half. One becomes half. less than double. So we can face these three situations in the short term. If you double or triple the input, doesn't matter. If you double the inputs, for example, Output either output is exactly double, exactly double, 40. So this <coughs> situation is called constant returns to scale. 
constant returns to scale. When the quantity is double size, then the constant. Because constant returns to scale means the output is increased at the same proportion. So you increase the input uh, double. You increase the input, you make the input double. Output becomes double. If you triple the inputs, output is becoming triple. That is a constant. Yes, constant returns to scale situation. So if you increase the inputs at a particular rate, then if the output is increased at the same rate, so that is called constant return to scale situation. But if it becomes, for example, 50, if the input, I double the input, output became more than, more than double. This situation is called increasing returns to returns to scale. Now, if the output becomes 38, for example, so I doubled the inputs, the, but output became less than double. This is called decreasing. Decreasing returns to scale. So, if we change the scale, what happens to returns? These three situations increase. So, if we, we can call it law of returns to scale. Previously it was what? Law of returns to variable proportion. The previous law in the short term, what was that? The law of returns to variable proportions. Why we say variable proportion? Because in that case, it was 3, 3, 3. Proportion, or oh, proportion was variable. The ratio is in this case, proportion because we say scale change. Scale change means everything is changed proportionally. If I double the capital, I have to double the level. Level. So since everything is changed proportionally, that means scale change happen. What happens to returns if the scale is scale of production is changed? So this is called scale change yes. in production. So if the scale of production, this three situation happens. So it can be constant returns, it can be increasing, it can be decreasing. So this is the mother law, for example. And if you are asked to tell about the main theme of this law, what do you say? If we change all the inputs at a particular rate or proportionately, the output will be increased at the same rate. Or it can be increased in the increasing uh, rate. Uh, it can be yeah increase. increase more than the double. double. Yeah, more than uh, the rate the inputs has been increased. Or it can be increased less than the, input. the rate the inputs has been raised or increased. So these are the three situations. So that's why this law can be divided into these three laws. So law of So if you are asked to tell about the law of constant return to scale, so what do you say? What will be the main theme? What will be the main theme of the law? If we change, change the proportionality, yeah, increase the inputs proportionally. Inputs proportionately. That means, for example, what did you say? If we double the inputs, the output is doubled. So, for example, if we are in a position to explain the law of constant returns to scale, so what will be the main theme of the, this law? What will be the main theme? If we double the inputs, the output will be exactly double. If we triple the inputs, output will be exactly triple. If we uh, increase the output uh, inputs by 10 times, the output will be increased ten, exactly ten, by 10 times. Ten, ten. So this is constant return to scale. And then what about the second law? What is the main thing? If we increase, if we increase or if we double the output or if we increase the input by 2 times, what will happen to the output? The output, the output, 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 output will be more than double. More than more double. Than double. Than output will be more than double. So the, what is the third law? If we increase the input by two times, the increasing rate uh, less than double. Yes, the output will be less than increased, but less than double. 
less than the whole. So these are the three situations in the long run. So we saw the short run situation. We saw the so do you have any question? Huh? Any problem? Any confusion? So we had two situations. One was short run situation where at least one input is fixed. We have long run situation where no input is fixed. Short run as well, you have fixed that way. Input means production and input means production. The output means supply. What, what, what? Input, what is input here? What is output? Like, say, Okay, input means the resources, what you are using to produce something. For example, you are just willing to produce uh, some breads. So, what do you need? You need flour, okay, sure. you need uh, uh, sugar, soybean, sugar. sugar, eggs, Salt. yeast, lot of other machineries, etc. Labor, land. Mexico. So all are inputs. On what is the output? The bread is the output. Bread is the output. Ah, is that clear? Thank you. Okay. But I mean, long run or short run, that too, I don't know. So long run, is short run is just a fixture, that way. Hell, but that way, but I mean. Output was over to the distraction. Short run. Short run. Right. Why? Why? Why it happens? Why? 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 Yeah, if you increase the inputs, the output will be increased for sure. There is no reason the output will be decreased. There is no reason. Output will never be decreased. Yeah, so maybe if you increase the output by five times, in input. So if you increase the inputs by five times, the output may not be increased by five times. Sometimes it may be increased by five times <coughs> or in some other case maybe it will be increased by more than five times in some another case it may be increased less than five times so you can have three types of situations depending on what depending on the production technology so what is the production technology when we say for bread, example bread uh, what is the production technology For example, if you have q equal to 5, k to the power 0.5, k to the power 0.5, this is a production function. So you know the production function. Huh? So did you discuss the production function? Huh? Okay. So we talked about the production function. For example, if it is 5, k to the power 0, l, it is a production function. Short run or long run? Short run. Why? Why do short run? K is fixed. Okay, so if you have any fixed factor, that will be short run production. So 5 is the level of technology. So 5 is not the input here. So you have these two inputs to look at this. So if you find any of these inputs is fixed, you can call it short run production. But if you have 5, it is about 5, and it is about 5. It is short run or long run? Long run. Because you don't have any fixed factor. These are the powers. This is the power. So k square means it doesn't mean that k is fixed. K is the variable. So it can be can have powers. It doesn't matter. So this is another production function. So this production function, this production function, all are called production technologies. So production technology means what? The production function is also called as production technologies because production function is a technical relationship between inputs and output. output. You see, technology matters here. So if it is the level of technology, if it is 5, five. put k equal to 2, l equal to 1, you will find one result. If it is 15, you will find separate seven. result. So what level of technology you are using in your farm, in your plan, yes. your output depends on that. that yes. Isn't it? So you are a businessman, yes. so you know yes. if you put the inputs, what will be your output level? It depends on the technology you are using. Even the labor and other things will be the same for the same. Same. Yeah. But if the technology is different, output will be different. Yes. 
So you see, I am using this uh, video in the class. I am just recording it and I am putting it for you. So what happens? You see the output. So you can repeatedly see it again and again. And in the next class you can come if you have any question. But if I don't use this uh, video, what will happen? Maybe you will forget a lot of things. Now you are not taking any note. Previously maybe you were busy to uh, take the notes. So when you take the notes, I will follow the teacher. So now you don't need to take the notes. You can go back. You can review the, the lecture again and again. Even sitting on the bus, sitting in the car. So you can do it. And if you find any, any ambiguity, you have the forum there. You can put the question there. Another, your, your fellow student uh, may or your friend may uh, uh, yes, respond. Or your teacher can respond. Or you have the option in the next class, you can raise the same question. So, so because of technology, the output becomes very much higher. If we don't use the technology, maybe <coughs> our learning, because for example, if I uh, just give you one assignment and I tell you to search Google. So this is a separate type of skill. If you search Google, you will get a lot of sites there, a lot of links. So if you enter into a link, you will find some words. These are highlighted. You can click on that. You can know the definitions. So you see, what is the benefit of using technology? You are getting a lot of skills together. You are not only learning a constant interest skill. If you like to know, okay, what is returns? Click on that. So you you get the, the, the technology will take you to the definition of returns. Lots of definitions. Yes, and lot of definitions, examples, everything is there. <coughs> yeah. If you like to have uh, any conversation about the scale, so maybe you didn't understand about the scale. So what you can do? You can just click on that if it is highlighted, or you can just right, right click and go for search. So it will take you to that the definition. So you see the technology, if you add technology, your output can be huge. So that's why we take, talked about the uh, production technologies. So it is the relationship fine, inputs and output. If you add the technology, this relationship can be much different. So this production technologies, so what will be the output? If we just uh, increase the inputs proportionally, what will be the output? It depends on actually the production technologies. So every plant, every production unit got a technology. You will find, you, if you have five plants, every plant got a production technology. You will see, all of your plants uh, actually are not performing uh, in, in a similar rate. way. Same rate. Same rate. Yeah, at same rate. Because the production technology is, is not the same. So the, the Rashmalai, uh, for example, in Kumilla, they, they are producing Rashmalai, Matri Bandar. And you will find some other uh, uh, producers also there. Not the but the quality is not same. Why? Because the production technology is different. So that's why the technology is very crucial here. So how you are combining the inputs? What kind of knowledge you have? What kind of skill you have? So it depends on all these things. The finishing, for example, Japanese product and a Chinese product is far different. Because the finishing, some other skills, still the, the, the Chinese people didn't get. So these are the things. So that's why we said it's a production technology. And what is the scale of production? It depends on the production technology. So for example, if you have this production technology like 5, uh, k to the power, Zero, L square. This is the short term. Short term. So okay, fine. So what if I if I ask you whether this any of this law is related to this no. production model or not? No. What do you think? No. So you have a production technology here. Yes. So do you think that uh, it is constant interest to scale production technology or increasing or decreasing? What do you think? First, okay. look at this production technology. Huh? Which one? Which one is related? Short run? You don't get the risk. Okay, it is short run. So, do you think that the, this, this laws are related to this short run production function? Or long run? No. 
Because we are talking about scale. So scale is a long run phenomenon. It is not a short run situation. Scale is always long run phenomenon. It is always a long run phenomenon. It is not a short run phenomenon. Okay. So, yes. So this for this production function, this is not these laws are not appropriate. This doesn't go with this production function because it's a short run situation. So these laws are applicable only for the long run cases. Now let us take one long run production function. Q equal to 5. K to the power 0.5. That will be the form. Now let us check whether this production technology is a concentrated scale production technology. Because every production technology got one quality. Yes, one qualification. Every production technology. So this production technology, suppose we can say it constant, constant returns to scale production technology. How will prove it? How will prove it? This is a constant return to scale production. We have to prove it. So the power is power to same. Not all the powers. So let us try to probe. So how we can probe? How we can start? One. You have two inputs. Let us make this inputs double. Double. So 2k. In place of k, we can put 2k. Okay, so the power is 0.5. So just we double the unit. And 2l. Power is 0.5. And 5 is there. Fine. Now let us check what happens. 5 is there, 2 to the power 0.5, 8 mm -hmm. to the power 0.5, 2 to the power 0.5, 8 mm -hmm. to the power 0.5. So now, all the uh, uh, constant terms bring in the front. For example, 2 to the power 0.5, 2 to the power 0.5, you have 5. You have 8 to the power 0.5, 8 to the power 0.5. Just look at this. <coughs> this is equal to what? The same uh, thing. Q. Q. This is a Q. So this is 1, this is the power 1. So you have Q. 2 multiple. So Q became double. Why? Because I made the inputs double. So it is a short run or long run? Uh, sh sorry. It is a constant returns to scale or increasing, not decreasing? Constant. 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 So this production technology is a constant returns to scale production technology. I prove it. So we can prove any production technology in this way. For example, uh, if it is, if we put 7 here, so put 7 here, so what will happen? 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, so 1.2, Q, 1.2, is it? Because, to the power 0.7, to the power 0.7, this one is Q. So I can put Q for this, and you have you have two to the power five, two to the power point five, two to the power point seven. So it will be one point two, isn't it? One point two, two to the power one point two. Q. So it's more than double. More than double. We just made the inputs double. We got the output more than double. Okay, two to the power one point two means more than two. So output becomes more than double. So this production technology is not constant. It is increasing. Increasing. Increasing it just to scale production technology. So similarly, you can find any any long run production function if you have, you can identify whether it is in constant returns or increasing returns or decreasing returns. returns. So this production technology is increasing returns to scale production technology. Yes. We can write IRS, or uh, for the short term, we can we can write increasing returns to variable proportion IRDP. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't matter. Is that the abbreviation? You can write it or not? Doesn't matter. So now let us go for some shortcut way to understand whether it is increasing returns or decreasing. Decreasing is all constant. What are the shortcuts? Maybe for you it will be convenient. Okay. These kind of production functions are called yeah, like decreasing because any anything you can buy. Fine. Okay, so you can you can put here for the two. Yeah, so, so it will be increasing. 
we'll, 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 I'll show the shortcut method. So this kind of production technology is called Bob Douglas. Bob Douglas production function. This is called production function. So you have some specific uh, characteristics of this Bob Douglas production function. So today we are not going to that. No, this kind of production function is called Bob Douglas. You have the production technology here. You have K here. I want to input, and you have the power and another. So it got some what should be the power and uh, there are some properties for production technology. So you have a lot of types of production technologies. So it is Cobb Douglas type of production technology. Cobb Douglas is a person, he's a kind of a mathematician. So he gave this form. So it is well uh, you can say widely used production technology in <coughs> business and economics. So widely used production technology. So there are a lot of production technologies, not only Cobb Douglas production technologies. So, Production technology is popular one. Yeah, it's popular So if you have this kind of form, you can easily identify the scale of the production. Easily identify. What you can do, you just take the powers. Point two, point four. Just look at the powers. So it is point seven. So if it is less than one, it is decreasing. Decreasing just to say. If it is, for example, power is 7, so 0.7 plus 0 0.5, 1.2, greater than 1, so increase. Increasing it just to scale. If it is uh, like 0 0.7, 0 0.3, so 0 0.7 plus 0 0.3, so 1 is equal to 1, it is constant. It just to scale production technology. So you can easily identify whether the te production technology is CRS or IRS or uh, yes. Yes, CRS, IRS or DRS. Very easily you can identify. Now let us just try to take uh, one production technology like 5K L square. So can I identify which, which kind of production technology it is? IRS or CRS or DRS? Yeah. CRS. 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 How do you identify it? So I talked about the shortcut method. Just what is the power of K? IRS. 1. What is the power of K? 1. 1. What is the power of L? 1. 2. 2. 1 plus 2 is greater than 1 or equal to 1 less than 1? You got three, so it is greater than one. If it is greater than one, it is increasing. If it is exactly one, <coughs> constant. If it is less than one, decrease. Decrease. This is the shortcut method, so you can easily identify the production technology. So that is what scale your production technology is. You can easily identify. You understand? Okay, so let us try to identify some other production technology. Some, uh, the scales of some other production technology like uh, 5, 0 0.3, 0 0.6. What kind of production technology it is? Decreasing. 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 Why it is decreasing now? You understand? Why it is decreasing? decreasing. Yeah, why we can uh, yeah, call it as a decreasing? K3 L6. So then the power, the sum of the powers is less than 1. So if it is 1, what will happen? Constant. Okay. Very good. So 5 k to the power 3 l to the power 0.7. Increasing constant or decreasing? This production technology. CRS or IRS or DRS? What is the power? 0.7. So if you add these two powers, you are getting what? 1. 0.7 plus 0.3 1. Constant. Constant. Very good. So that is the point. We can add these powers. No, it's okay. That's, that is nice. That is nice because you don't need to learn everything uh, in the first shot because so we have time. We can go slow. We have to learn these things. Very good. That is very important. Target time increasing. No, it depends because yes, increasing is always good. Now, let us think of a case. Like you have an electric electricity plant. Quick rental, for example. 
So you are now producing a 10 megawatt with this. For 10 megawatt, you maybe uh, your cost is 10 million for example. I don't know. No, one, 10 million, one, sir. 1 million? Yeah, okay, okay, one million. So production cost. Production cost yes. one million. So now the board of directors of that plant, they say we like to make it 20 megawatt. So the manager operation, I don't know, maybe he or she has been requested to submit a proposal about the cost, additional cost for this increase in the output. So what will be the additional cost? Additional cost taken is our generator are coming to the power plant. What will be the additional cost? Now this one million to produce 20 million. This project is the power plant is 10 megawatt. How much is it? If you have a project to generate 20 megawatt, you can make it 20 megawatt. We have to make it a little bit. मतलब ये तो शुरू भी नहीं आपने क्या करते होले 20 मिनट तो तो करते होले आपने वो सिंदम गैस बड़ा उसमें भाव ना आपने के इस जनरेटर बड़ा चले Okay, so you have a production process, you have a production technology. So without the production technology, you can so whatever you additional input you need, it depends on what? Depends on your production technology. So if the production technology is Q equal to for example 5, it is about 0.5, it is about 0.5. Now your production technology is constant interest scale production technology. Fine. Now if you want to increase the output. Yeah, to 20 million, 20 megawatt. That means if you like to double the output, so what you have to do with the inputs? Cost must be doubled or more than doubled. Cost will be doubled. The input may not be doubled. Need not to be doubled because the production technology is constant. So production technology tells you at least you need to double the inputs because the production technology tells you what. If you double the inputs, output will be doubled. So if you like to double the output, naturally what happens? Yes, when you go for an operation, it may be a little bit, yeah, plus minus, it doesn't matter. But production technology tells you, theoretically, theoretically, yes, you have to double the inputs. So what will the cost in that case? Two million. Maybe in practice it is not two million. Yeah, it, that, that can be different. Theoretically, theoretically, since your production technology is this, so you have to know about the production technology. That is very important. When you are asked to give this kind of proposal, you must know the production technology. So what production technology you are using? For example, if it is 0.75, 0.75, it is increasing it has to scale Now tell me, to make double. Sir, input compound. No, you don't need to increase the Yes. Input to double the ratio Yes, the input will, you don't need to double the inputs. Right. Because if you double the inputs, output becomes in this production technology, output becomes more than double. So if you like to double the output, you don't need to double the inputs. Is it clear? Yeah. After that, the output is megabyte, so you can do this megabyte. So your production technology tells you that you don't need to double the inputs yeah. because if you double the inputs, output becomes more than double. So if you double the inputs, output will be more than 20. So if you like to uh, uh, produce 20 megawatt, so do you think that the input should be doubled? No, because as part of the production technology, if you double the inputs, output will be more than double. Output will be more than 20, maybe 24, 25. So if you like to keep it on within 20, so our input will, will not need to increase the inputs uh, two times. Is that clear? Hmm? The question is the production technology. Production technology, yeah. You, you have to first, you have to know about the production technology. I am going to say, 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 I am
থামতে পারতাম তাহলে স্যার সুবিধা হতো এইটা যে আসলে মানে ইউনিকও দেখবে তো মানে অ্যাকচুয়ালি হোয়াট হ্যাপেন্স স্যার ইন বাংলাদেশ ইউ আর নট মেইনটেইনিং এনি টেকনো প্রোডাকশন টেকনোলজি ইউ আর নট মেইনটেইনিং দিস কাইন্ড অফ এটা প্র্যাকটিক্যালি কিন্তু আমরা যত মানে যত যত সহজে বলতে স্যার একসাথে তো অনেক কিছু মানে যেমন আমরা ইউ হ্যাভ টু এস্টিমেট ইওর প্রোডাকশন টেকনোলজি ইটস নট ইজি ইউ হ্যাভ টু এস্টিমেট ইওর প্রোডাকশন টেকনোলজি ইউ হ্যাভ টু হ্যাভ ডেটা জেনারেট ডেটা দেন ইউ হ্যাভ টু এস্টিমেট ডেটা <laughs> <laughs> so from there you will estimate the production technology so then you can use it for further uh, 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 if you like to expand your production and etc so you can then use it it's not easy yes it's not easy yeah it's a huge class but usually we don't care this technology we just calculate the cost so theoretically this is the possibility if you have the production technology yes you have a certain level of cost now yeah so then if you like to travel, travel look at the technology then you can at least say that i don't need to double the inputs i can say the relative cost yeah yeah cost. yeah yeah maybe yeah, yeah. yeah. less than yeah yeah maybe sometimes maybe it will be greater than the cost depends on a lot of other things we are talking about the inputs so because the cost uh, it is uh, not the input only the, the price of the inputs so in the market if you find that the price of the inputs in case price of the inputs triple so then the cost will be maybe triple it doesn't matter so we will talk about the inputs inputs the inputs we, you don't need to double the inputs yes you don't you don't need to double why why <coughs> why you don't need to double the inputs only yeah. production yes production tech tells you it is a increasing or decreasing or constant constant yes sorry decreasing increasing industrial scale production technology so production technology tells you that you don't need to double, double the inputs to have <coughs> the double output so the matter is sutra upar bhitti kore amra right right so that is the theoretical possibility in practice it can be different yes okay so now uh, we know what are the uh, short run situations what are the long run situations in long run we have three law one is constant interest to scale increasing interest to scale and decreasing interest to scale and what is the difference between law of decreasing interest to scale and previously we saw the law of decreasing returns to variable proportion what is the difference if i ask you to distinguish between the law of decreasing returns to variable proportion and the decreasing returns to scale how we will distinguish this two if i ask you to distinguish or differentiate between the law of decreasing interest to variable proportion and the law of decreasing interest to scale so the main the long is the fixation of the outputs because in the uh, previous one yeah so the law of decreasing interest to variable proportion law of decreasing interest to scale but in the first case yeah the first case the, at least one one variable so this is a short term short term yeah. this is a long term yeah. second second one in this case output will fall yeah. output falls here output not fall increases third or you can explain it to me and so these are the basic two differences and that is it because variable proportion is related to short run short run and that is related to long run decreasing in variable proportion so in this case in indicates the output falls so in this case actually no scope of uh, actually no never the never the output will never fall because you are changing the scale so output will never fall the scale factor is also the uh, distributive matter because the scale here mm-hmm. the scale is applicable but here the scale no, no, is not applicable because you have some fixed factors here yeah. since you have the fixed factors as long as you are keeping the, all these factors fixed if you don't change the fixed factors you cannot expect that 
the, the output that will be, be yeah. Okay. Actually, the, for a change of scale, two factors should be the change, but here for one, one factor only. That yeah, only one factor. So yeah, how many times do you have to apply for the project? Short run to the project? It's not possible. Sometimes it's not possible. Okay. Long run is actually short. Short or short? Short or short? Yes, it's a production year. Good run is industry, but good run is industry. Yes, it depends. For for the proper agriculture, short run is actually agriculture. Yeah, for agriculture, it's a long run is industrial. Yeah, so all the laws are not applicable for so this lecture or this video is not applicable for everybody. <laughs> so the person who are using Android set or computer laptop, it is applicable for them. But if someone is not using uh, laptop or, or, or Android set, it's not applicable for them. Because they will not enjoy it. So a same thing cannot be uh, applicable for everybody. So any law cannot, you, you cannot apply all these laws for a single situation, it is not possible. So you have to think, everywhere context actually important factor. Context matters. For example, this person and he and another person, you will find these three persons, they are receiving the same thing in three different okay. ways. Because their contexts are not same. It is not meaning that he is a stupid, he is a genius, it is not meaning that. So what Einstein said, everybody is genius. So this is the responsibility of the teachers to to help you to come up. Exploration. Yeah, to explore. Yeah. So the exploring, helping the the learners uh, explore uh, their ideas. That is very important. So that's why nothing is called like a stupid or bad student, or a good student. Nothing on this earth. So if I find some, if I 